Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and here's another tutorial for Project Spark. I've had a request to make a racing game. Now there are some issues with making racing games in Project Spark, not least of all, there is no multiplayer anymore. So you can't play with your friends uh, and do a racing game against each other. So you need um, vehicle AI that are going to go around the track with you so that you've got somebody to race against. So there is a complication there. You can't or you could have a time trial and you just go around a, a, a track and try and beat your time. Um, vehicles, uh, the sort of racing game that you, you want, uh, it, it, the things that you're going to need are going to change depending on what sort of racing game it is. So it could be runners, it could be cars, marbles, uh, boats, animals whatever it is that you've got on your racing game you'll have different challenges in order to make something so what i've done here is a, the, a very basic uh racing track and i've used marbles for my initial one and then i've used cars which uses exactly the same brains uh as the marble track um and so i'm just going to show you the cars because uh, it is the same brain and uh, I expect most of you all want to make your own vehicle. So let's have a look at what I've done. So what I have here is a four car race around a circular track. There are five laps of the track and I have a counter that tells me how many laps and who is in the lead at any particular moment. And I have control of the black car. So let's, let's have a race. Here we go. I haven't put any sound effects in, so to make this better, you probably want. You'll notice my cars are all going off, and the blue car is in the lead, and I am the black car. And that's trying to catch up with that blue car. Yes, no. Let's see if we can go around on the outside. Nope. Go around the inside now. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I am now in the lead. I am the winner. And all I have to do is keep this lead as we go round for lap four. And our final lap. Oh, I'm going to lap the silver car. No, not, not quite. Lap five. The winner, black car, which is mine. And I've won. And I'm just going over here now uh, to end the game. And everybody's just going to ram into me because uh, they finished as well. There we go. Right, so there's our racing game. Now, how was this done? Okay, so we've got AI cars and we've got a controlled car, which is that black one on the end. Now, you'll notice they're all black. They've got some code in their brains that just changed their primary color to a color because I couldn't be bothered to make all of these individual cars and the car was originally black. So I just changed the primary color uh, for this. Now, I've got a path that goes all the way around our track and if you look at the path properties, whoops, path properties, uh, I've got it on a clockwise loop, starting at waypoint number one. It's curved, 3D, and movement says linear. Let me change that to smooth. I don't think it makes much difference, and it keeps changing backwards. Anyway, so there's our path. Uh, here is a uh, a log that I've got across the starting finishing line and this will help us calculate how many laps uh, these cars have done as they pass through it. It's non-collidable and invisible so we can't see it. Okay let's look at the AI. Right, uh, that's just to do with the, the car so don't worry about that. Right, this is, this is the solid colour equals grey to make it a grey car. Now countdown timer loop so this is a one second loop every second it is going to create a number variable called random and it's going to be a random number between one and three until our lap number equals five we're going to move on the relative path of that path at the speed of that random number so this car is going to change its speed as it goes around that track between a number one to three obviously you could change this to to however fast or slow you want the cars to be and you can change this loop um, so that it's making that decision faster or slower uh, depending on how many seconds you want it to do it you can have it 
doing it every half a second if you want, whatever, it's, it's up to you. Now, originally I had it counting the uh, waypoints, uh, but this is not necessary anymore, so I did need to take that out. Because now, instead of counting the waypoints, I'm going to bump this rustic pillar and I'm going to increment my lap by one. So as it hits that pillar for the first time, it's going to say I finished one lap. It's then going to send some information to this logic cube. And it says this logic cube's number variable called lap added equals lap, my lap, whatever lap number I have. And the logic cube's ball name, now because I originally made this uh, game using marbles, um, so and I haven't changed the variables because I've used the same brains, uh, equals silver. So it's going to change uh, a text variable in that logic cube and this number variable in that logic cube. When the lap equals to five, so we've finished the race, we're going to move towards that ancient uh, grate. And we've also got some displays of uh, lap and waypoints, which uh, obviously I'm not using anymore. You can display the, the lap times of each individual car. You can make a feature of it, have different colors, etc., etc. It's up to you. Okay, now in the logic cube, It says once lap added equals zero and lap equals zero until lap equals five. So when you finish the laps and the lap added is changed. If lap added is greater than my lap number, then make my lap number equal the lap added number and make our current winner the ball game. So if you remember rightly, each of these cars, as they pass uh, the, the the log, the, the finishing line, is going to send their name and their number of laps. And it will change if that lap number is greater than the lap number that is currently in this logic cube. It's going to change both that lap number and the name of that current winner. So if the next, next car comes through, let's say um, the car comes through, a red car comes through and it's on its third lap and it's the first one to hit that, that uh, finishing line and it's going to send the number three and red to this logic cube. The blue car then comes along and it also sends the number three and the word blue. But because... Um, the red car's already changed that lap number to three, it's going to ignore this and it's going to ignore the name. It's only going to take the red and that lap number. So that's how it works. Then we're going to display that lap number out of five at the top of the screen. Again, you can make a big feature of that. And if the lap is less than five, then it's going to display current winner and the current winner name. Otherwise, so if it's if it's lap five, it's going to display the winner and then the current winner. And it's also going to power on that victory flag, which made the flag go up. So there you go. So it should, should use the end of the race. So there we are. There is our little mini racer. Obviously, there's lots of things you could do to improve on that. Um, you can change the uh, vehicle controls to make them more complicated. Um, you can put some uh, information into any of these to make them um, attack other cars, fire at other cars, all, all sorts of things that you could do. And obviously the track, I've done a very boring track, you could do tracks with bridges and chicanes and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So um, have fun with that. That is a very basic racing game but it, it has a lot of elements in it that you will need to, to, to make something a little bit more complicated. So I hope that's a good starting point for you at the very least. So thanks for watching and keep sparking. <laughs>